Hello, spooks and spookettes. It is me, the Editing Goblin. You see, I've broken back into the editing bay for one night only to take over for the Halloween episode. I may hate the job that I was forced to do, but I fucking love Halloween. But before we get started, there is one small caveat. I do not edit as fast as that human, but I could understand and listen to just a sampling of their becks and calls. I bet you're gonna have to cut that. Cut it out, Editor Mason, cut it out! I can't be seen as a liar. Um, real quick, Editing Mason. So, uh, I'm making this a two-parter. That's right, two parts. Halloween episode now, second half Halloween episode later. Hope you're happy to have me. Let us begin this spooky Hallow's Eve. <laughs> Disclaimer for disturbing material. Yay. Yes, I'm recording. Okay. All right. I convinced everyone to watch a scary movie. Fun fact. Fun fact for y'all. Um, the Dave Matthews Band dropped 800 pounds of human waste on Chicago sightseers in the Chicago River. What? What? That's a, that's a real fact. Wait, when and how? And why? Um, it was about... Because like, I don't think Dave Matthews would do such a thing, like dump poo on real people. Why would um, he do that? It, it was on August 8th, 2004, and their bus tour decided to dump 800 pounds of shit, piss, and cum uh, into the Chicago River. Right onto a sightseeing boat on an architecture tour. That is horrifying. It is a day that would live on. In yeah. Chicago um, upon further inspection, I googled, and I quote, "Dave Matthews Detroit shit." End quote. And, uh, and you found one, what you were looking two, for? three, four, five. The first five that fill my screen are all about that exact accident. And my favorite would be from thecut.com. I think about the Dave Matthews Band poop bus incident a lot. Posted July 30th, 2018. Beautiful. Pour one out from that, brother, man. Holy shit. Jeez, oh, he already Dave poured Matthews. enough out for all of Oh, no. Yeah, he poured enough out on people. But I convinced everyone to watch the 2001 masterpiece, 13 Ghosts, starring Matthew Lillard, most notably, because... God, I love Matthew Lillard. Shraggy. Shannon they... Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. Sh he's he's Shaggy. This the live-action Scooby-Doo <laughs> movies. The Shaggy. only ones we recognize as canon. It also stars F. Murray Abraham, Tony Shalhoub, Shannon Elizabeth, Rod Diga, and Alec Roberts. And, of course, Adrian Monk was in it. Can't forget that. Who was he? Tony Shalhoub. He was, uh, he was Papa. He was Pop Pop. Oh, he was Big Papa, Crispy Wife. Crispy what? Wife. What? Like, I didn't. I'm not like. No, 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 shit, no. Right? Papa, Crispy Wife. He's Arthur Crispos. Oh my god. His wife is Crispy. I feel like. Is this what it felt like when they started speaking in tongues in the Bible? Oh, I'm not speaking in tongues. <laughs> I said that his wife got burnt. Burnt very, oh, very bad. Oh, Daddy Crispy. Yeah. I get it now because yeah. his wife is Crispy. Okay, that was rude, but okay. Can we refer to the character as Crispin Glover? Well, we're not there yet, so we'll have to get there first. Okay. But I convinced everyone to watch 13 Ghosts. I've only seen it once in my life, and I believe it was like seven to five years ago. Um, and I still liked it then, and it's from 2001, so that's... That's a big difference. But my biggest thing with this movie is their use of practical makeup. But we'll get into that later. Um, yeah. Um, hey, first of all, maybe we should also say hi. Oh, John's yeah. Here. John's hey. here again. What's up? We brought, we brought back John. He is our first reoccurring guest. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Congrats. Mason. You have won the title and honor forever as first reoccurring guest. John, hey, how do you feel? Hey, Mason. Hey, Aubrey. Yeah. Turned myself into a pickle. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, oh, God, he I'm, did. I'm looking at his fucking... screen right now. Holy <laughs> shit. This is the funniest shit I've ever seen, John. Thank you. 
Yeah, so great job, John. You have um, met the exact qualities of allowing us to make you watch a movie. So here you are. Welcome. We're here. We're doing it. I can I can hear the score of Interstellar in the background right now. I'm not even joking. Perfect. The set and stage of uh, a brand new thing uh, because we're going to name our show. Yeah, we're, we're going to give this a name. We'll figure something out. Um, figure it out, guys. I convinced Mason to let us do another movie episode because we need to do a spooky movie episode, and we watched 13 Ghosts in 2001. This is, in fact, technically a remake of the 1960 film of the same name by William Castle, which I have not watched, I'll admit, but did just watch a video that showed me some clips of it, and it was actually one of the first movies to utilize... Kind of what was 3D technology, not really 3D, but what became 3D technology. And basically, viewers could watch the movie as is, or they could use the special viewer, which like a weird box with lenses you put on your head, and then you could watch the movie and also see the ghosts that were in the movie, which really weird. Probably would have been super freaky. I, I, just I that was, was like a fun fact. I was about five at the time. Good chance I would have definitely not have seen that, even if I was quadruple that age. Wait. Five well, times. No, like... no, it's a little bit younger than me. Ah, uh, you know, who knows? Who knows if I would have watched it at 20 either. Oh, uh, was that like six or yeah, seven? Yeah, it would have been three, maybe four. So I'm going to say I probably wouldn't have watched it. Didn't start getting into these until I was about 13. Because I was a big old pussy. Wait, is that a coincidence? Is that a coincidence or is it something more? That you were 13? Well, I didn't watch 13 Ghosts when I was 13. I just mean I started watching movies when I was 13. Or scary movies when I was 13. Just movies in general. Not until 13. No, scary movies. I watched movies my whole life, and that's kind of why I want to make this a, a thing that we do, you know, from time to time. Like, it's not a weekly thing, but like, maybe once a month, every two months, something like that. And apparently sometimes um, we have a guest, movies, too. Yes, I really want to bring guests in here, because I think it would be interesting to bring people that are, you know, because, like, John, I know John really appreciates good horror movies. So oh, I yeah. think, you know, that's good to have in here, because, um, Mason, you don't necessarily enjoy them, and that's totally fine. It's um, one, And, like, if we watched a musical, bring in somebody that likes musicals, even though I really like musicals. Well, John also likes John, theater, what? But... I also love a good musical. But I do have one thing to say regarding the podcast with Wiener Nova. Um, Hereditary was actually made by the same person who made There's Something About the Johnsons. Uh, okay. Hereditary Cut and Midsummer. Cut it out, Editor Mason. Cut it out. I can't be seen as a liar. Nix you, don't, Nix you don't need to tell me. I'm already going to do it. <laughs> I realize you're saying Nix it, but for a second I thought you were saying Nixon, Nixon. Nixon! I "Uh, I don't like it, but he lied too, so... Anyways, back to 13 Ghosts. We start out with ghost hunter Cyrus Criticos, super creepy resident rich guy, and his lovable but neurotic uh, psychic assistant, Dennis Rafkin, played by Matthew Lillard, our fave, we stand. Oh yeah. And they are leading a team to capture a spirit called the Juggernaut in the graveyard, or the junkyard. They're, like, basically, movie starts with, like, them rolling up into a junkyard, right? Real confusing. Yeah. Wait. Um, Wait. Wait. We're just starting out. Give me my shot. Let me explain what happens at the beginning of this movie. (laughs) Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna let Mason take it from here because go ahead and get him what shake. That's great. You you get him. You get him all looped up for us. Okay, so we start out. Uh, I'm just gonna go off of what I have on my notes here. Uh, I wrote down a lot, but we'll see how how far it'll get me. Hmm. <laughs> um, house on haunted hill makers. Yeah, I think you said that to me, Aubrey. Uh, and then uh. Box is screaming lady collage. Oh yes, the block the box set of the movie. Uh it's a bunch of screaming faces that make a big face. This is unrelated to the 
Okay, no, the first thing I wrote about the plot is that Pills got tossed because he needs he needs him clean. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Fuck the notes. Uh so No, no, no. Your junkyard. notes are good, Mason. Junkyard. Uh Sha- Shraggy and and Cyrus uh find a ghost, a juggernaut. Uh, it murders everybody except for Shraggy and Cyrus, and they catch him. But then Cyrus dies by sl- by throat slit, and then the family is like, "Hey, there's so a what you're now. saying is wait, wait, wait. What you're saying is Cyrus did die. Yeah, yeah, he dies, and his throat was slit, and he died. And then Shraggy got really upset, and he cried about it. Um, well, yeah, because oh, he owed him a lot of money for his work. So. Bring in the cube. Uh, there is a cube. Uh, he there is a one point when when Cyrus in the scene when they're trying to catch the ghost, he screams, "Bring in the cube!" And they wheel in this massive cube that is that looks like it looks. What does it look like? That bring in the that bring in the cube was really good. Let me just tell you, you did really good. Yeah, thank um, you. The cube has a lot of inscriptions on it, which you can't really tell what they are, but you'd probably base they were some kind of like Latin witchy spell something on the cube and it's really i want to say high tech but i have to say 2000s version of what high tech looks like because that's honestly that's one of my favorite things is what the 2000s thought the future was going to look like and like super space age shit like you ever seen xenon oh yeah oh god so, I yes, wish the future was going to look like that. We'd be so stylish. I've got that written down here, too. The, the, their ghost Google glasses. Yeah. They, they looked very stylish. Yes, very everyone cool. on the team, including Cyrus and Dennis, are all wearing these glasses that we will refer to as ghost Google glasses. That's uh, G-cubed. G-cubed. The there G-cubed glasses. We'll call them G-cubed glasses. Oh, I love it. It's like G-Q, but G-cubed. So anyway, or Shaggy's a psychic. G. We need you to know yeah. that right now. Shaggy's a psychic, and he's having, like, some serious, like, brain problems every time he's, like, he's he's having some, like, uh, ah, like, every <laughs> time he's in, in range of a spirit. Like, Which just... Uh, goblin here. I have to say, uh, because these idiots forgot to mention it in the episode, Matthew Lillard's faces throughout this entire film are some of the most life-giving things I think I've seen in quite some time. It's gorgeous. Just, just go look it up. Just, just go look them up. Look up those faces. You really, you're not missing anything. Go do it. Fucking grabbing his head for dear life, having a panic attack, fetal position, so he's trying to get these pills in, and Cyrus literally, like, kicks that shit out of his hand, and he's like, no, I need you clean. Yeah, yeah. He wants the psychic to do his job, because he's trying to pay mm-hmm. him to catch, he says, I believe, 12 ghosts in the beginning. He says, you contracted me for 12 ghosts, which is weird, you guys, because the movie's called 13 Ghosts. But, what? Uh, when? Who knows? When did they name it that? Probably production. Or probably in the 1960s when Wait, it was shit, called 13 look, Ghosts. Let me look at my notes. Yep, definitely says in the title here that it's 13 Ghosts. What's the fuck up with that? Nice. Was the last one inside um, of us all along? Yeah, long? man. Well, uh, we'll find out. I, so, uh, it, as Mason said, aptly... Oh, is that okay? Do you have something else? Um, I also have written down a truck full of blood with two question marks, and I really want to, like... What the fuck was that? Do you remember? <laughs> oh, I well, remember yeah, that. Well, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> so, so we got this cube, you know, and uh, they're uh, bringing out the ghost, and the ghost drives in a semi truck spewing blood, like not even in a normal no. way where it's coming out of the tanker. No, it's coming out of the headlights and basically the front bumper. Makes Please? no sense, but we're scared. I so it's have flooding the streets of... Oh, I was just going to say, it's flooding the streets of blood. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Actually, that is not uh, the ghost's doing. That is the Unky Cyrus. That's his doing. Because, Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he wants to bait the ghost out because he wasn't showing. No, 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 no. You're wrong about what the bait was. Was well, the bait shrank? It happened the right after he was... said, release the bait. No. He said, we never needed bait before. And the guy that said we never needed bait before, our buddy uh, Scraggy, that's, he's the bait. 
and everybody right, right. else that's there is the bait because this in particular the juggernaut really likes to kill people like his body count has tripled almost quadrupled since he's been dead so oh, yeah it's... the bait was people i only know that because i i've i'm on the wiki right now okay yeah, but like I'm wiki continue <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. So, they eventually get the Juggernaut in the cube due to the loss of many, many other minute soldiers that were working with the team. They're not, like, actual soldiers, but you know what I mean. They're, like, the big tough guys that are working the equipment. The body guys. So, a lot of them died, but also one of our ghost sympathizers there were two ghost sympathizers that came and like very 2000s liberal-esque were like you can't go sir people and like i get it they were people you're right you can't enslave them that's rude (laughs) oh so now it's rude to enslave things i guess goblins don't count that's ghost slavery and we don't support it it's ghost um I guess goblins are less people than ghosts, then. Exactly, they're Ghost Peta. So, Ghost Peta, uh, one of their members died, the dude. Good! Um, the girl was still alive. A bunch of the other, yeah, Can worker you still, guys. Hey, and question. also, Cyrus, wait, wait. And also, Cyrus is presumably dead because his throat has been slashed and he's laying on a car. So, like, I know that he already spoiled it earlier, so, like, the dramatic effect is super unnecessary, but I still felt like I wanted it there. Uh, anyways. So, that is the end of the first scene. Roll title credits. Ask your question. Dun, 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 Thirteen girls. Thirteen girls. Anyway, I, the question, can you still be on Ghost Peter if you killed... If oh, you can you wait? Okay, if you are a ghost, can you be on Ghost Peter? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Be like ghost, an all out. ghosts are on Ghost Peter, man. They're fighting for their rights. At least I hope all ghosts are on Ghost Peter. Not the ones in this movie. Who knows? Actually, Alrighty. the hammer is a huge advocate for Ghost Peter. So, moving on <laughs> to our second scene. We had sorry, no, there was one more thing: the car back, the car back break. <gasps> oh yeah, one of the soldiers that died. I asked Mason to make a note of this death. The ghost sucked him into a car and his oh. back snapped yeah. in half like a glow stick. And that's exactly what I wish that ghost would do to me every day after work. But the guy died from it, so super big downside to it. So Double-edged sword, really. Just a, yeah, just a thought. So. Rolling into the, the next scene, we get our intro of like the main characters and... I can only describe this as a Twilight, New Moon style Bella depression circle. You know the scene where Bella's sitting in her room and they go and it's like winter and then they turn and it's like like summer and then fall and they're just doing a circle. I don't know if that's time specifically passes. a Twilight thing. Also, I have no, no, no. But it's movies. specifically the only reference I can think of is in Twilight they do it, and it's very, very similar because they do the one circle, and it's so much. Or they do like two circles, and time has changed. Whereas in this movie, it's it's Arthur and his wife, and their kids are playing in the yard, Kathy and Bobby, and as the camera turns around the room the room eventually engulfs in fire we can basically hear voice acting which tells us that kathy died in the hospital due to burn wounds and arthur is now living in some shit ass apartment with kathy bobby and the babysitter maggie and he really don't have it together why he's also a math teacher so like He's kind of fucked salary wise. Also, yeah, how does this math teacher who don't have his life together have a fucking ma- like a babysitter slash maid? I didn't understand that. Suspension well, of disbelief. Okay. To be fair, like he lives in a shitty house, and I'm sure he doesn't pay Maggie a whole lot, but he would need help. I'm assuming this is a 2001 movie, so he probably has no idea how to take care of his kid and also make sure everything gets done while also still doing his job. Well, it's, you know, a new concept to men in the 2000s. I can, I can argue something. He had a daughter that was like 16, 17, somewhere around there, but she is... 
perfectly capable of watching over the kid. No, I'm assuming Maggie is college age now. That was kind of my thought. So I was like, okay. regardless of if she's in high school or college, yes, she could take care of Bobby. But I think Arthur, being a very smart and loving father, knows that asking Kathy to take care of Bobby and raise him as a child while she is still technically a child and still understanding how to be an adult would be asking way too much of her while she's grieving. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know? Fair. So like I, I can see Arthur digging himself deeper in debt just to make sure his kids don't grow up like resenting him or feeling like they made them do too much. That wasn't their job or whatever, you know, like he's a good dad. He's a really good dad. He's just having money problems, man. How I can, I really, he's balling on a budget, but he ain't balling. He's like fallen. He's fallen on a budget. <laughs> I fucking hate that. Anyway, Luigi's Movie Mansion. Yeah, Mason decided this was Luigi's Movie Mansion. And it, not wrong, but Arthur inherits a house because Cyrus is dead. And Cyrus was his uncle. So they get this super fucking weird, what I can only describe as sci-fi glass smart house from the decom. You know, uh, if you've ever seen the Smart House movie on Disney Channel, which if you haven't, you absolutely fucking yes. really should and yes. we eventually will do an episode on that i can promise you i haven't seen that. um oh my god you we haven't have seen freaking smart movie. we will then smart house bro. is amazing bro all right smart we're, house we're, had it on the nose even before alexa bro they were alexa before alexa but that's a talk with her another time so they get to this glass beautiful modern 2000s future home and the lawyer is like, this is going to be yours. And the lawyer, he's kind of sleazy. And um, they get to this house and they're like, okay, let's go in and use the weird future key. But uh, they're met at the door by Dennis, uh, a.k.a. Scraggy Matthew Lillard, in a power and light jumpsuit, pretending he's there to see some shit. And, and you know, Arthur, he's a nice guy. So he's like, you know what? We just got this house. It's fine. You can come in and do and do what you need to do, it's no big deal, my guy. Which is really kind of him. Really kind. Because right. I probably would have been like, bro, get the fuck out. It's like midnight. Uh, it's way too dark for a stranger to be coming into my home. Um, but they all go... Such a good guy. No, yeah. Arthur is a really good guy, and that's that's really what you figure out the whole time. Correct. One important thing that uh, you forgot about, Aubrey, the young boy, the young man, um, there's no need to feel down, he... Uh, likes to record things on a little little thing. He likes to report on death. Oh, you are right. Fucked up shit. Yeah, because his mother died while he was still pretty young, so he seems pretty unfazed by death. Like he likes to yes. talk about it and is pretty blunt about it and and I get it. I he I, is a I future very much relate. Prime podcaster. Yeah, he's oh, a yeah. true true crime, Bobby true crime Bobby has a promise. Sweet promise for the future. But continue. The lawyer walks him into the house and is trying to, to sell them on the dang house and, and get the hell out of there. And that's where I think I wrote being a real slut about it because I think he was. Um, yeah, he was being really, like, really weird about it. They, he was being sleazy and I wouldn't trust that guy. They go into the main room, one of the bigger focal points of the room, of, uh, of the movie, actually. And, uh... There's a thing spinning in the middle of this big round. You ever see a? You ever see a? What's it called? Pirates yeah. of the Caribbean, the one with the uh, spinny map. Yeah, it's like a bunch of circle dials with a bunch of things on them. But yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's like, like the spinny Pirates map. Pirates of the, the Caribbean tin, the spinny map. <laughs> yes. God, I can't wait till <laughs> that hits theaters. Ah, uh, the spinny. Dead men spill no maps. Uh, but yeah, it's, there's a bunch of, there, there's, there's a, the, the one circle in the middle is spinning, but then there's like 15 other circles that are not spinning yet, and they all have weird Latin on them. And like, the kid rides around on his tricycle in a circle around with the spinny thing, and it's like, ooh, it's creepy. There's a lot of like, clockwork stuff. Um, and also, uh, the whole house is made of glass, so you can see through all of it? Do we mention that? Thing, it's not a tr- it's not a tricycle. You're thinking of the wrong horror. No, movie. yeah. It's a scooter. We we did in fact mention that the house was made of glass in the beginning. Okay, um, yeah. And the, right, the glass. I will also mention that glass has the same inscriptions of the box that they trapped the ghost in in the first uh, scene. the The inscriptions are everywhere. Very again, Latin spell witchy s. 
I, I really don't know how else to describe it other it's... than maybe it looks like Elvish, but that's about it. Um, um, that's one of the only things I wrote down in my notes is... Looks like um, Elvish? Yeah, yeah. Elvish inscriptions in the walls. Uh, so yeah, it's become very obvious what Uncle Cyrus has squandered their family's money and fortune on, which the lawyer told them about. And there's no, no, no. Uh, Arthur said he knew about his uncle Cyrus, but all he had been told was that Uncle Cyrus squandered the family fortune. When he sees this house, he, it's made clear he didn't squander it. He built this fucking house and clearly built on that money with something like. I don't know. It looks to me like Arthur didn't squander it, but he made yeah, that like money Arthur, like a lot. Oh yeah. Oh no, no, Cyrus. Yeah, Cyrus made that money like triple. Yeah, yeah. Cyrus. Uh, the lawyer actually says Cyrus was a genius with finances. Yes, oh. yes, he was, and that's why Arthur's like, "Oh shit, my family lied to me." They're so, trying to convince me that like Cyrus was crazy. Yeah, and as they're seeing all this stuff moving around, there's there's this clockwork stuff, and we see. The things that Cyrus has spent his money on, which is uh, tools and otherwise uh, torture <laughs> devices that are all throughout the house, used for CBT, otherwise known as cock, cock and, and ball, ball torture. torture. From it Wikipedia, was a lot of it. it was the all over the house. It is absolutely not cock and ball torture, ladies and gentlemen. Please disregard that. You're not watching a porn cock movie. And ball so, <laughs> you're right, I feel like that needs to be said. Film. Oh, absolutely not. They do some more exploring, and Shraggy disappears and to the basement where you you can't see around, and starts having a panic attack for some reason. Yeah, he sees a ghost in the basement. There's a ghost, by the way. There's a ghost in the basement. And then, while they're exploring, they accidentally enter what's most definitely the cube, which is disguised by- Oh, they're all- uh, the whole house is basically compromised of cubes. It's straight up a clockwork house. <clears throat> Right. Like, so, whoever, whoever once, engineered that had to have a fucking nightmare. Oh, absolutely. But we'll get to why that's a nightmare later. <laughs> once Scraggy realizes that the ghosts they, that he's been capturing with Cyrus are in the basement, he runs upstairs while Arthur has been talking to our sleazy lawyer guy. And the sleazy lawyer guy's almost gotten him signed on everything. And uh, Scraggy's like, wait, I've had an Scraggy acid trip. And, and Scraggy <laughs> starts talking in all kinds of like fancy ghost lingo, like some some paranormal investigator type shit. And then he's like, oh, OK, like, I'll put it simpler for you. Ghosts. And they're all like, well, goats. <laughs> I have that written down. Goats. And the sleazy lawyer's like, oh, he needs to get out of here. He's been harassing my office. He's crazy. Yada, yada, yada. Obviously being a douchebag. Don't touch me, um, I have that written down as well. And I don't... What, what happens then? Dennis specifically tells Arthur that there are 12 spirits imprisoned in the house, held captive by spells written throughout the residence in the glass. So it the, the writing is in fact spells. But uh, I believe... Later, after- the lawyer, the sleazy lawyer, sneaks off and goes into the basement. As he goes into the basement, he's wearing the G-Cube glasses. And he's he's seeing all the ghosts, and he's addressing them all, and making fun of them, and just being a general dick, as we know he is. And then he goes to the main heart of the mechanism that runs this building, and there's a suitcase of money for him. He grabs the suitcase of money, and as he does, it activates a mechanism, uh, which is multiple pedestals next to the machine, that Cyrus had set up. The spinny boy from earlier. Cyrus had set up, and it seals the entrance, releases the ghosts, one by one. Okay, so yeah, so the lawyer releases all of the ghosts by freaking accident. He only releases one at first, and that that is the angry princess. Do you want to take uh, it from there? Yes, what, what had happened was the ghost that got out first just so happened to be the, the the gal that the lawyer made a weird, creepy comment on. And then she walks up with her blade, uh, the, this naked lady with, a, with just like a cleaver in her hand, uh, walks up to go try to chop him up, and, but then all of a sudden he backs up in the wrong spot and one of the seal, like sliding doors of the, the cube house just... They just slide shut. Just... 
with him in the middle of it, and it just it just slices him into half, and then like the front part of his body slides off, and you just see the inside of the back half of him, and it's really really gruesome, which is wild to me because he didn't even the, the the ghost didn't even fucking touch him. That was all him. He just walked into a fucking door. She's a ghost. She didn't have to. Uh, She's smarter than that. And then I wrote down on the paper, this is definitely the moment that I realized this was a murder house. <laughs> um, and after that happens... um, It wasn't the Latin on the doors for you? It, it was the actual murder? Yeah, seriously, Mason? Hey. It wasn't, it wasn't um, the spinning in the main room? I would like to go ahead I'm, and... Oh, I'm new to this, okay? <laughs> I would like to go ahead and give our first ghost bio. The Angry Princess. The Angry Princess is the ghost of Dana Newman. Dana Newman was an incredibly beautiful girl in life and was unable to recognize her beauty. Doctors tried to save her from her self-loathing and low self-esteem but it was only fueled by a series of abusive boyfriends and led to her having breast implants, nose jobs, and other unnecessary procedures. One night, while Dana was alone in the clinic, where she worked, she tried to perform a surgery on herself due to an imaginary imperfection on her face, but the unorthodox procedure went horribly awry and left her blinded in one eye. She gave up on her beauty and committed suicide in her bathtub by slashing herself with a butcher's knife until she bled to death. When her body was discovered, she was described by her loved ones as being, quote, beautiful in death as she was in life, end quote. Hate that. Gotta love that they had to just continue the, the complex the, after death. Right? Um, and the lawyer is quoted on saying to her before she's released, nice tits. So he kind of deserved it for uh, sexually harassing her. Oh, 100%. Oof. Big oof. I mean, I mean, a man. If if it was say Aubrey saying nice tits, that's different. But like, like it's if Aubrey said it, it'd just be like me going, "Hey Mason, nice cock." I think it has more to do with the fact that it was a murdered ghost woman. I think it's more of a. It's not like a gender thing. It's more of a. You don't know her. Like if Mason was like, "Hey Aubrey, nice tits," I'd be like, "Okay, thank you." <laughs> but if like say. A random man that I was waiting on at work said, "Nice hey, man, cock. nice tits." No, nice I'd be cock. like, "Uh, or nice cock." Yeah, I'd be like, "Uh, I don't know you, sir." A hey, uh, you know, a hey, uh, waitress, sir. Nice tits. Hey, yo, wait, Tony, hey, uh, sir. Nice spit in your food. Hey, uh, hey, hey, Johnny. Hey, John Arino. Hey, what up, bro? Nice cock. Anyway, so psychics are ghost lawyers. Do we do we wanna Um I can I can take it from here. Um uh, yeah, go for it. So the uh the children all decided to run amok. Um the young boy, he decided to Molly. fucking razor skew it up and down the hallways that are ever changing, I'm pretty sure. Also, mm. what kind of parent lets their kid use a razor scooter inside? My mom would have never let me done that shit, dude. No rollerblades, no skateboards, and no fucking razor scooters in the motherfucking house, dude. Uh, hey, man, well, this I, is this is single dad status we're talking about. Um, okay, um, that's fair, you know. Um, Adrian Monk, single dad, is just cooler than your fucking parents. Deal with this. Deal with this. <laughs> But the uh, the daughter comes across a really, really nice bedroom. Falls onto the bed. She's in love with the new house. Absolutely enamored by it. And this is right before... Uh, what was her name again? What was the ghost's name again? Oh, our girl Dana, Angry Princess? Yes, the Angry Princess. And then she discovers the bathroom. This is after the Angry Princess gets released. And you see through a pair of the G-Cubed that there's blood all over it not not normal blood but spooky ghost blood and they decide hey you know what this is a great thing she makes herself right at home starts using random perfumes oh yeah just really spritzing that shit all over her even though she just moved into the whose perfume was that to be fair 
I would do the exact same thing because, like, that's their house now. People yeah. who owned it died. Like, what are they going to do? Like, yeah, Dad signed the paperwork. Yeah, at that point, Dad had signed the paperwork. It's theirs. Yeah. And so she's in the bathroom. She's in the bloody bathroom, but she doesn't know that's bloody because it's ghost blood. And ghost blood. Uh, and she decided to go look in the bathroom. She's just looking at herself, playing with her hair. You know, normal 2000s, what a, what a middle-aged white dude thinks that a girl does in the bathroom type dealy. And uh, she can't see it, but the princess, the angry princess, decided, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take a fucking bath. Because, as you heard in her bio... She likes bath time. So this is her bathroom that she killed herself in, at least metaphorically. And so she's in there, and with her ghost vision, she sees that the water running is bloody water. And this is all I believed, at least I personally believe, to be her perception of what the bathroom is based off of what the last bathroom she was in as a human represented. She gets in the tub, and uh, daughter gets in and uh, starts running the water as the ghost is inside, in her perspective, a fully filled up bloody bathtub. And she's just putting more water onto her. She's running her hand through the water. The oh. ghost in a really trippy sequence. Yeah, just real, but she's, just take a moment. She was just really going to splash town. Like, she was just, oh, yeah, this, this yeah, gal yeah, was yeah, just, yeah. just was like, pouring water out of the bathroom faucet and just be, just, just like cupping bro, it and I'm, splashing I'm it in her face and just being the, uh, like. And I'm like, girl, you're in a horror movie, not a fucking face wash commercial. Jesus what? Christ. But, also, but like, she's <laughs> doing it. Like, she, she's just sitting there like, oh, oh man, running water. I've never seen anything like this before. Wait, did they not have Splash. water in the last apartment, girl? Ooh. No, Daddy broke you. He paid for babysitter, not water bill. Yikey. What, you think he made money? He's a math teacher. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a math yeah. teacher, so I never once assumed he had any kind of money. Yikes. <laughs> he just knows how to add money he doesn't have. Um, mm. Or she... This is back to where I was with it. Um... Kathy is running her hands through the water and and enjoying splash time. And the angry princess is about to... Kathy's getting a little bit too close. Or the angry uh, princess. It's the angry princess, right? Yeah, she's getting too close to the angry princess. Angry princess is, a, is, is getting that, that butcher's knife up. About to stab, and then all of a sudden, Adrian Monk bumbles in, and he's like, Hey, Kathy! Where's your brother? And at this point, um, our boy Shraggy and Adrian Monk decide, Hey, the house is fucking moving. We should get out of here. So they start to leave, and by that point, the house is getting boarded up with these metal barriers. There are no exits to the house at this point. They don't fucking know that, because it's a glass fucking house. Oh, yeah. And then at this point, the babysitter's like, whoa, the lawyer's gone. Did he split? And then we all, and then, and then everyone laughed. And then they went. The end. Yeah, but no, they're, so they're locked up. And I think the boy gets stolen by child ghosts. Oh, uh, yeah. You were down by ghostly. Uh, here we go. Here we go. I got you. I got you. Younger brother disappears after getting separated from Maggie. But luckily, he got the, the, the G Cube glasses. And he's going on his Razor scooter. He encounters the torso and the bound woman. Basically, as he's going down the steps to the basement, you can hear what is presumably, I assume, the torso and the bound woman calling him down in, like, childlike calls. And then you eventually hear a nice, motherly spectral ghost telling Bobby not to go down. But he still does, because Bobby's a fucking dumbass. He's a dumbass with a scooter. And he also, I guess, maybe when he wants to play with the ghosts. This doesn't go well for Bobby. He ends up running to the end of the hall, falling off his razor scooter. The glasses fall off. Bro, he, he didn't even do it. Back on, and he screams, and then he runs around, and then we don't see Bobby for a while. Bobby's gone. But that brings us to our next two ghosts that we saw. 
the torso, and the bound wound. The torso, I found this one pretty fun. The torso is Jimmy Gambino. Oh, yeah. He was yeah, obsessed with gambling. Notes. Yeah. He was obsessed with gambling, and, with, and he would spend his days at the track instead of school, and his nights gambling in CD bars. Jimmy eventually opened his own booking business, and though he was barely able to make his payoffs because of his compulsive gambling, he quickly developed a reputation due to his refusal to turn down a bet. This eventually caught the uh, the attention of mobster Larry Finger Vallejo, who had heftily bet on a boxing match. Jimmy agreed and sealed his fate. When Jimmy's fighter was defeated, he fainted. When Jimmy awakened, Larry Finger Vallejo and his gang arrived to collect Larry's winnings from, from Jimmy. But because Jimmy was cleaned out, instead, they cut Jimmy's body up, wrapped it in pieces of cellophane, and dumped him in the ocean. And so every time the torso's on screen, it's pretty much a body with no legs and no head wrapped in cellophane. And, and then it's like, just like hobbling at ya. Yeah, it's pretty awful. Yeah, that's definitely the more passive of the ghosts. He just kind of hangs out. Yeah, he's just kind of like hangs out and wants to like chase people a little bit. Yeah, just like a little bit though until he gets tired. Hey, so for this next one, you you should read it in his spooky voice, cause, so I can make it spookier. Now, the next one is the Bound Woman. Susan Legro, the Bound Woman, had a privileged life and was a member of her school's cheerleading squad. Her parents were the richest people in town, thus instantly making her the most popular girl in school. During her senior year. Susan dated the captain of the school football team, Chet Walters. When Chet caught Susan with another boy on prom night, he clubbed the boy to death before tying Susan up and strangling her with his tie, breaking her neck. He buried her body under the 50-yard line of the football field. That's a touchdown. Thank you. Her body was eventually discovered two weeks later. Her spirit remained bound to the earth, just like all of the others. All of these ghosts have to be, their, their souls have to be so tortured they're bound to the earth so that they can be, you know, like, captured or whatever. Yeah, well. Alright, while the uh, baby Bobby Scooter Boy is lost, Arthur finds Kathy. Take it away. Huh? Oh, I thought you were going to tell me what happens when Arthur finds Kathy. Which the next one's thing. Kathy? Kathy, baby. Your daughter! Scooter. Is okay. Well, the next thing I have written down is they all go is that psychics are ghost lawyers and they all go to the ghost basement. So I may no have- at this point. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think I missed a couple spots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're 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 behind on your notes. You're gonna speed up. No, I'm. What do you mean behind them? No, my no, notes? no. Actually, them all going to the basement is accurate. Is no, yeah. We haven't all gone to the basement though yet. So yeah, you like you said, John Arthur and Kathy, and then he's like, "Hey, Kathy, where's your brother?" And uh, then Arthur's like, "Okay, we gotta fucking go. We gotta find Bobby, Maggie, and we gotta get the fuck out of here because I don't like this shit. This guy told me there were ghosts, and I kind of believe him, but I kind of don't, and I don't know how to feel about it. Let's." go and I, he's he's being urgent and real serious so basically they all end up finding each other except for bobby they can't find bobby and since they can't find the child everybody's real stressed. hey bobby bobby where you been where you going get bobby? Bobby. eventually they come bobby. to the clu- conclusion that bobby must be in the basement which is correct actually and um, now your note mason um psychics are ghost lawyers and they all lawyer down to the basement. Okay, well, yeah, they all go to the basement, but the next thing that I put is Miss Miss Honey ASMR. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, okay, I'll go. Oh, wait, I feel like I should name this one. I would like to call it so we watched like you know so we watched that was a lot of that was a lot it was a lot to take in but uh it's something it's i'm just trying to throw something out there trying to be creative um 
This absolutely does not need to go in the episode. 